I'm Chad. You're watching Square Body Stuff. Hey, welcome back to the channel, everybody. Today we're going to be working on uh, setting up our valve springs and everything for our uh, 454 project for Cream Puff. I'll briefly go through checking spring pressures, uh, uh, installed height, and all of that kind of stuff with, uh, with what I've got. This is not an in-depth how-to. I'm going to kind of go over what we've got going on with this particular setup. Uh, but before we get into that, uh, go hit that subscribe button. Uh, hit the like button, give us a thumbs up if you like what we're doing here. Uh, and also check out my merchandise store, squarebodystuff.shop. You can pick you out some shirts. Uh, we got t-shirts, we got hats, we got stickers. So go check that out, squarebodystuff.shop. And one last little plug. Don't forget, we're going to have the tailgate throwdown in Newport, Arkansas, at Newport Raceway, March 28th, 29th this year. Uh, it's, it's an all-truck drag race event. We've got, I think, nine classes. So whatever type of truck you got from uh, bone stock daily driver to all-wheel drive, whatever you've got, we've got a class that'll fit you. Come out and have fun. We also have a bunch of dr grudge racing, so check it out. All right, let me explain what we've got going on. Uh, this is the valve spring, or one of the valve springs that came with these cylinder heads. These are just some uh, Pro Cops nothing fancy they're older uh, i've had him i've got them used several years ago i've been hanging on to them for probably over 10 years i know uh but anyways these are the springs that came on it they weren't going to be quite heavy enough for the camshaft we're putting in there now the camshaft we're going to be using is a lunati voodoo 268 uh it's a dual pattern cam uh the springs that they suggested were uh part number 73 124 16 Here's the uh, their specs that really mean anything to me. I wanted to see if these springs that I had, I've, I've had these spring, springs sitting on the shelf for a long time too. They're uh, bigger and a little bit heavier than the ones that were on the heads. I wanted to make sure they were going to be heavy enough to run with this cam. So here's the uh, seat load and open load uh, at max lift on the exhaust side. The exhaust side is 555 lift. I didn't worry about at this time, you know, writing everything down, just checking them out. I didn't worry about the intake side. It's less lift. So, uh, anyhow, we got 100 pounds at uh, 180 seat load and 265 at, uh, it was 124 was the uh, height of the spring at that point. Uh, the lifter or the springs that I have, these guys, uh, at the seat load at 1825 installed height was 118 uh, and the lift at 127 uh, was the the pressure was 310 so those are really close to what uh, Lunati is suggesting for this camshaft so I think they'll work really well now that 1825 uh, seat height for these springs uh, I'm gonna show you how I come up with that when I installed them at the 1880, uh, like the Lunati springs are, they didn't have quite enough seat pressure. So what I did is set up the spring pressure deal and put pressure on it until I got to the 118, 120 range and set my stop, which is just a pair of vice grips for right now. One of these days I want to make a fancy stop for this, I don't have to use that, but right now these work pretty well. So what I did was got to one, uh, 120 pounds roughly, set my clamp and then took a measurement with the uh, spring height measuring tool and that's where I got this 1825. I had to go through and shim everything to get to our 1825 uh, installed height. Uh, intake and exhaust and all that stuff is coming out good on at least the first two, the number one cylinder. I've still got to go through and check all the rest of them. And I'll show you real quick what we do to check our installed height. These uh, spring height checkers, they're fairly inexpensive on Summit Racing. That's where I got mine. You need that. You need your retainer. And you need your locks. Now, another thing is, the way this head is machined, uh, I had to get locks, or I had them actually on shelf, but luckily, uh, locks that were 50 thousandths taller or actually make the spring retainer 50 thousandths taller than the intake side uh, you'll run into that sometimes on 
certain applications. Oops. Get my valve up here. My retainer's in. And it's going to fight me a little bit. There we go. Then you'll just adjust it out. You don't want to crank on it super hard, but you want to make sure that you got everything good and seated. I mean, it'll go a little bit further past 125, but these shims come in uh, 15 thousandths. 30 thousandths to 60 thousandths all the shims I've got. I don't have any like 1,000 shims and I'm not worried about getting that close on it. Uh, but right now, we're at 125. It'll go at about 127. If that gets just real close, that'll be our installed spring height. And then we go over, we go over here to our intake side, which on the exhaust side, I've got a 15 and a 30 thousandth shim. So it's 45 thousandths shim plus the uh, 50 thousandths offset keepers. And the keepers for the intake side are standard, seven degree. And I've got, I think, two 60s and a 15 uh, shims underneath these. And it comes out to about 1830. Like I said, they may be off a few thousands here and there, but on the spring pressure, I myself don't get too carried away with it. Uh, anyhow, it's up to you how, how close you want to get on it. Now, I could play around with these shims, uh, you know, different combination of shims, you know, maybe because uh, these shims don't measure exactly 60 or 30 or 15. They're just a little bit over, so I could I can maybe mix and match the shims. Uh, to really get really close, but I'm five thousandths off from where I need to be. That's not going to be that big of a deal for spring pressure. Now checking our spring pressure, pretty simple. Uh, this is just an Arbor Press I got from Harbor Freight. It works out really well. Uh, this pressure gauge got from Summit. It's a Proform brand. It goes up to 700 pounds. That'll pretty much take care of everything I deal with. So what we need to do. <clears throat> is you'll set your gauge to what you're wanting uh, set to 1825 and you set it in there and I run it down and I put my clamp on my stop And then you'll put a spring in there. Try to get everything all centered up. And then you just run it down until you hit your stop. And we're showing about 118, about right where we need to be. Now setting up for the open spring pressure is a little bit, a little bit more difficult because this only goes down to uh, uh, 1600. Maybe one five hundred. Anyhow, so we're looking for a one. What was it? One twenty-seven inch and two hundred seventy thousandths. So what I'll do is I'll set my calipers up. That's uh, going to be close enough, and I'll use a snap gauge. which can be a little bit of a trick to get going. Use the snap gauge, and then I'll put it in the arbor and do about the same thing they did with this tool. Set it in there. You don't want to put a lot of pressure on it because it will collapse your gauge. Once again, just run it down until you hit your stop. Just a little over 300. 
So what I'll do is I'll go through and check every spring. Now this is this is the open pressure for exhaust side. So I'll go check all or eight of those, check all those, write everything down, document everything, uh, and then go through and reset it for the intake side. Uh, now the open pressure, the open height is the same on intake and exhaust, so I can uh, check all 16 at that measurement. Now I forgot to mention, uh, with these used springs, uh, before I even thought about using them, I went through and just kind of got a standard, I think I used 1880 or uh, uh, just a, I can't remember what number I used, but I went through and checked all these springs to make sure they were within uh, a few pounds of each other make sure i didn't have a really weak one or a really really strong one or make sure they were pretty even so that's if you're going to use used springs you need to go through and check those that first and for that matter it's good to check new springs that way too because you never know there may be a manufacturing defect and now's the time to catch it and right, this is good stuff to document also because if on down the road if we start having a valve train issue or something going wrong uh, we can check the spring pressure make sure we don't have a weak spring or something well, that's about all I got for you for setting up springs. Uh, this application, I had to do a, a little thinking, put my thinking cap on, and uh, I'm just glad I found my my keepers, my 50 thousandths taller keepers. Uh, that, and I didn't have to order more because that would have put me off another week or two days, whatever. But anyhow, is I want to get this video done today because our next video, I'm going to be showing you what I've been doing on these heads. I've got this cylinder head pretty well ported, ready to go. Uh, that one I haven't really touched any on anything so that's what we're we'll doing in the next video but that's going to take a lot of a lot of time on my part uh, filming and editing and I haven't had time to get that all set up so I jumped ahead a little bit done springs on this head that's pretty well done so I'll give you a little sneak peek what this one looks like but I'll go a little more in depth on it in the next video Now, I'm definitely not a master head porter. I've done several. Uh, but yeah, uh, it's not going to be one of those things. This is what you need to do. This is just how I do it. So, but that'll be the next video. All right, thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments, hit me up down below, or you can hit me up on Facebook, uh, Instagram, or TikTok. Uh, all my other social medias, it's always square body stuff. So, until next time, you'll keep your square bodies rolling. We'll catch you later.